Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. Overall, 11,585 individuals have been tested for COVID-19. Currently, we have 1,774 tests that are pending. For those of you who are awaiting test results for COVID-19, please check the Ministry of Health's online portal or the link on our website. Please remember that while you await your results, you must remain in self-isolation. I will now share the most current case counts. There are 69,981 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 20,546 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 90 cases and Sarnia-Lambton has reported 203 cases. Michigan now has 47,552 cases with 9,851 cases being in Detroit. Today, we are reporting 732 cases of COVID-19 in our community, an increase of six cases from yesterday. 39% of our cases have occurred in long-term care homes, including both residents and staff. 287 cases have resolved 22 people Please are in hospital. To mute or unmute yourself. Two, to lock or unlock the conference. Three, to eject the last user. Four or six, to decrease or increase the conference volume. Seven or nine, to decrease or increase the volume. Four, eight, to lock the conference. 17% of our cases are between the ages of 20 and 29 years. 15% of our cases are between the ages of 50 and 59 years and 20% of our cases are 80 years and older. 42% are male and 57% are female and 1% is unknown at this time. Our community has lost a total of 61 people to COVID. 47 deaths have occurred among residents in long-term care and retirement homes. Our health unit is working with 15 long-term care and retirement homes that are currently experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks. Testing for COVID-19 is based on a clinical assessment. Common symptoms include fever, a new or worsening cough, shortness of breath. However, other symptoms may be present such as a sore throat, unexplained fatigue, an increase in falls, nausea, vomiting, chills, headaches. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are several options. Complete the online assessment tool available at Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone or virtual assessment. To access a local health care provider, walk-in clinic, or virtual medical assessment, please visit eHealthWindsorEssex.ca. Windsor-Essex has two COVID-19 assessment centers, Erie Shores Healthcare in Leamington and Windsor Regional Hospital Olympic Campus. Please note that testing is available for people who have symptoms of COVID-19. Please continue to visit wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning everyone and thank you for joining us. We are deeply saddened to report two additional deaths today. One woman in her 90s and another one in her 80s passed away, in, passed away yesterday. Both women were residents of long-term care homes. I would like to share my condolences with the family for their incredible loss. This morning, I'm also pleased to enjoy uh, join, to be joined today by Elaine Isaacs, Integrated Care Manager at Southwest Ontario Aboriginal Health Access Centre, Windsor-Essex, or SOHAC. The Ontario Public Health Standards outline the importance of relationship between local public health units, boards of health, and First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people to ensure the appropriate delivery of health services, increase health equity, and reduce the disparities experienced by First Nation. The Windsor-Essex County Health Unit is excited to 
build upon our existing partnership with SOHAC and announce the expansion of COVID-19 assessment and testing centers for First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people and their families in collaboration with SOHAC. The Windsor-Essex County Health Unit recognized SOHAC as the health lead for First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people and their families and acknowledges that they are in the best position to provide assessment and testing services that meet the physical, cultural, and spiritual needs of local indigenous communities. The Windsor-Essex County Health Unit will provide a public health guidance and support for SOHAC as well as swabs to complete testing on their community. We are grateful for the exceptional working relationship with uh, Windsor-Essex County Health Unit has with SOHAC and I'm confident that this expansion of testing will ensure that local First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people have options and access to COVID-19 assessment and testing. I will now turn it over to Elaine Isaacs to provide more details SOHAC's, uh, about SOHAC's response and services for Windsor-Essex. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Sagoli, bonjour, kulamatsi, wache. Greetings, everyone. During this pandemic and always, Aboriginal health access centers like SOHAC work to ensure that First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people can access the services they need for good health. We are honored to have a strong partnership with Windsor Essex County Health Unit that allows us to both improve health equity and provide culturally safe COVID-19 testing options for the Indigenous communities in Windsor Essex County. Across SOHAC sites, we have been working closely with Indigenous communities and health system partners, local public health units, regional pandemic planning tables, and the local health integrated networks. We are inviting input and collaboration with First Nations communities in support of individualized responses for each community. For example, at our Chippewa site, we have been working closely with Chippewa the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, and Muncie Delaware Nation Health Centers. And are currently developing a partnership with Oneida EMS to explore possibilities for mobile testing for people with mobility issues. In Amgenong First Nation near Sarnia, we are supporting the community response by providing a nurse to provide testing. They are also launching their testing today in partnership with Lambton Public Health. Here in Windsor, we are expanding our testing services beyond our existing clients to the Indigenous community at large. In alignment with our core mandate, which is to improve Indigenous health by increasing the accessibility and quality of health care services for individuals, families, and communities. We want First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people to know they have options when it comes to access testing. You do not need to be a client of SOHAC to be tested here. Services are open to all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people living in and around Windsor. Screening is done over the phone with one of our healthcare providers. The first step is to call SOHAC Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. We will ask you about your symptoms, gather health information, and use a standard assessment tool from the Ministry of Health. And based on the screening, a testing appointment time and date are provided. When you come for testing, you'll also be provided with valuable educational information by our, offered by our primary health care team. They will be there to answer any questions you may have and support you through the testing. We will provide you with instructions how to obtain your results. The Windsor Essex County Health Unit will follow up on any positive results and ensure that you have the support you need. This information is posted to our Facebook page and our website. If you have any questions, please call us. We are here for you. Yamago, miigwech. Anukshuk, thank you for this collaboration and for recognizing our Indigenous rights to determination our health. Thank you. Yamago. The conference is now unmuted. We'll now take questions from the media. We'll start with the Windsor Star. 
Uh, yes, this is for Elaine. How many individuals does your organization typically serve? Right now, we're currently serving close to 700 individuals, and we are expanding. And then um, you're talking about opening these services up to the uh, com indiv Indigenous community at large. Um, how many people would that would that be that you would be uh, offering to provide these services to? Well, the recent Census Canada report shows we have a little over 8,000 in Windsor-Essex County. However, we are aware that not all Indigenous people complete the Canada Census, so we know that those numbers are much larger. And, and can you talk a little bit uh, more just about why it's very important to offer this service specifically to the Indigenous community and reach out to them directly? It's really important that we broaden our strategies to address the health equities uh, for Indigenous people. Uh, we want them to feel safe, comforted, and, and know that we uh, provide the best quality care and uh, understand where they come from as Indigenous people and the disparities they may have faced in the past. Thank you. Any questions from CBC? Uh, not at this time, thank you. Any questions from Blackburn? Yes, uh, sorry, a little bit unrelated to what we were talking about. Dr. Ahmed, um, the, are there reports from Chatham Kent that uh, 70 contract workers from Leanton um, that worked at uh, Green Hill Produce, uh, they were contract workers, and they were tested uh, because of the outbreak there, and there were 12 that tested positive that would be among our numbers. Uh, is that a correct figure? Numbers are of anyone who is living in our region will be counted as a case in our community. So the cases that, uh, that uh, uh, whoever lives here, it would have been counted already, and uh, we continue to to look for uh, to add those cases when whenever we identify a, a, a worker in these farms, if they're testing positive, we are reporting it uh, and counting them in our list. Uh, and so, can you confirm how many um, migrant workers have tested positive? Um, I don't have an accurate number, but it would be somewhere close to between 20 and 25 people who have been uh, tested positive so far. Um, and can some of those be linked to the outbreak in Chatham Kent? Sorry, can you repeat that, that question again? I'm having a hard time in understanding. Can some of those, the 20 to 25, be linked to the outbreak in Chatham Kent? Uh, well, the, uh, the numbers, yes, uh, if they are working in Chatham Kent in the farm, they will be part of that. I don't have that number right in front of me, but uh, as I said, anyone who has tested positive in our region, it will it it would it would have been part of that number. And do you know of any other outbreaks locally in any of the facilities? Uh, so we have uh, cases in these migrant farms. Uh, we haven't uh, got to the point of declaring it an outbreak yet, uh, because those are isolated cases. These are uh, contracted out in the community, and um, uh, but and we continue to work with them. We have 176 farms in our region, um, and we have more than eight to 10,000 people working in these farms. Uh, so compared to that, I think uh, we, we, are, uh, we are working with all these farms to ensure that uh, it doesn't get to the point of expanding it uh, to, or spreading it to a larger group to, to be declared as an outbreak at this point. I guess they tested positive. They would have been just like anybody else told to isolate and you're working with the, with the migrant farmers to make sure they're able to do that? Yes, so all the uh, individuals who are tested positive, the farms are providing them with individual accommodation at, uh, uh, at hotel or any of their uh, residential facilities that they operate. So they are all self-isolating and our team is in contact with all the positive cases uh, to ensure that uh, they are, uh, they are uh, not getting worse and they do not require any additional support. Thank you. Any questions from CTV? Yeah, I'm just curious, how vital is uh, testing moving forward uh, as we try to move into some sort of normalcy? So, uh, uh, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you're asking like, you know, how we, like uh, how sustainable this whole lab testing piece. Well, I think, again, depending on what questions are we trying to answer. So initially our goal, public health goal was to containment. So anyone who is uh, testing positive, the goal is to contain them to make sure that they are not spreading it to the community. So that goal still persists. 
but now what we are doing is we are expanding that to even identify individuals, especially in the high-risk areas such as long-term care home and retirement home, and to get a better handle of what's happening there right now, and uh, and then that would give us a little bit better direction if we if we need to do more proactive work in that facility. Swabbing people or testing people, we just have to be careful. This is just a point in time assessment. It's not one thing that would prevent any of these cases from happening in the first place. So let's just be very clear because some people think that if we are testing more people, that would help us to prevent cases. No, it won't. The only thing that would help us more and more is to to follow the public health guidance, to follow the infection prevention and control measures that are being practiced, and individuals who are getting sick, they are uh, staying home and they are following all that. So now the next question would be, as we move forward in the next stage of this COVID response, is how prevalent it is in our community. And then that would require, that means we'll have to expand the testing to even people who may not be symptomatic at all. Like I, I, I urge anyone who is symptomatic to go to the assessment center and get tested. So that's absolutely one thing that I want to, uh, people to do. But some people are reluctant to go to the assessment center for various reasons. But uh, I, I, I think people should go because we need that number. And then when we're expanding it, we need to have a better handle on what's happening in the community with these testing. And we also need to know uh, when we start antibody testing, also what criteria is that we need to do to use to have a better handle on what's happening in the community. So whatever we are ha having right now is the incident rate. So that means the new cases that are, that are in the community. But then when we are going through the more uh, lab system or testing more, we'll be moving more towards what's the prevalence in the community and then what does it mean for our community in terms of the um, immunity that people are developing or not. So I think it, 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 it is a good question, but uh, it, those are the conversations that we are having right now. We don't have, we haven't landed on a plan yet and some of this will be guided by the prov uh, provincial government, but locally we are also moving into that model that how we can uh, get to the stage of uh, having a better handle on what's happening on the ground. Time frame right now, basically, yes. right? Okay, yeah. So, so um, I guess the next question, uh, it was thrown at me by someone in LTC. Will there, yesterday we talked about how all the homes by the end of the week probably will have been swept, right? Yeah. Or swabbed. So, I guess the next question is will there be a second wave of testing for the LTCs and retirement homes? So, right now, there is no direction on that, and uh, some of the homes are already testing people even though after we have the mass testing done, if someone who's, who has been uh, negative, let's say, but if they develop symptoms, they are being tested again. So I don't anticipate that it would be like a mass testing on everyone again, but definitely anyone who is developing symptoms, they will continue to be uh, swabbed and tested, just like we normally do with any type of outbreak measures. Every time someone is symptomatic, the recommendation is to isolate them to make sure that all the infection prevention and control measures are in place, the individual is tested appropriately, and uh, when we get the lab results back, and then further uh, measures are taken. One more? One more? Sure. Okay. Uh, I know we've talked about this in the past, um, but it's coming up again, so <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, just, would it serve our community to have a lab? Absolutely, and I think that's uh, it's getting more and more apparent that uh, having a lab in a in a community of ours like ours, it would be uh, really important for us. Right now, the majority of the challenges that we are having is around the the logistics of how do we test them, how do we send it to the lab, and what's the turnaround time and. It, 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 is, it is a lot, and depending again what the future looks like, if the current volume of testing, what we are doing right now, will continue, or even building capacity for the future, I think it is important that we, we should have a lab in our community. Any questions from AM800? Yeah, um, the Aboriginal community could go to the COVID assessment center at the hospital to get tested, so why would this that be necessary um, for the Aboriginal community? If somebody can just explain to me um, the comfort level with this versus going to the hospital to get tested. Sure, I'll, I'll answer to that. Yeah. So during this pandemic and always, we want to ensure our Indigenous people have options. They need to feel safe and comfortable as possible to access the services they need. 
Uh, Aboriginal health access centres recognise our Indigenous rights to determinations in health, and we support COVID-19 screening and testing services as identified and led by Indigenous communities and organisations across Ontario. We do this because we recognize the need for Indigenous specific responses as part of a broader strategy to address health equity for our people. And if I can add, and if I can add a little bit more to that, uh, definitely uh, the health equity piece is a very important piece. And uh, it, uh, we recognize that uh, um, the Indigenous community uh, is identified by the ministry as also as a, as a priority population for a testing. So we want to make sure that there are options available for uh, the community to get tested and assessed uh, anywhere. So they can, as you said, they can go to the assessment center, but now they also have the option to go to uh, SOHAC for testing. Uh, so it's just increasing their options depending on their comfort level, uh, and uh, we we don't want to put any barriers. We in fact we want to remove all barriers for people to access uh, the testing and to get the support that they need in the way that they want it. Thank you for the explanation. Any questions from Windsor? Uh, Dr. Ahmed, you mentioned that uh, it would be beneficial for us to have a lab. If one was approved tomorrow for Windsor Essex, what do you think the timeline would be for that type of thing from construction to being up and running? Uh, I probably am not the right person to answer that question. Uh, I anticipate it could be anywhere between four to six months, but again, depending on what are the current existing infrastructures that are available, are we building everything from scratch, or do we have a facility that can be retrofit to, uh, to create that lab? We, I, I don't honestly don't know, and uh, may not be the uh, right person to ask this answer this question. Okay, thanks. Any further questions from the Windsor Star? No, thank you. CBC. No, thank you. Blackburn. No, thanks. CTV. All good. AM eight hundred. Just one, if I can get a comment from Dr. Ahmed. Uh, there's a survey out that's saying the majority of Canadians feel uncomfortable going out in public. Do you have anything to say to that? Well, I think uh, COVID-19 has uh, changed a lot of things in our day-to-day -day life. And uh, there's a lot of anxiety and fear uh, in, uh, in many, many people. And we can see the opposite, that there are other people who don't think that this is a concern. So we see uh, people on both sides. And uh, it, is, it is significant enough that uh, the government, uh, not only the Canadian government, but also government across the world has taken these bold steps to practically uh, shut down the whole country. So it is pretty significant. And uh, if you're looking at uh, people who are losing their loved ones to COVID, it is a concern for them. So I think moving forward, people will have to make adjustments and uh, they have to accept uh, some of the realities of the new world that how they have to do the physical distancing, how they have to continue to do the, um, uh, uh, just practice uh, respiratory etiquette, hand washing, new ways of doing work. So I, I won't blame people if they're, if they're anxious and concerned, uh, but those are the things that everyone is experiencing and we will just uh, continue to learn from our experience and uh, get better. Thank you. Any further questions from Windsor? Right? No, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Elaine, uh, for joining us. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending the session. Uh, thanks.